So welcome to part two of lesson four. We will focus on depth first search or DFS for both undirected and directed graphs. I assume that you have seen DFS before. It's the classical example for uh, explaining recursion and for using a stack to implement recursion. The sections from the textbook are 3.2 and 3.3. And we will also use some slides and, and material from this other textbook by Dasgupta, Papadimitriou, and Vazirani, just to go a bit more uh, deeply into how DFS works. If you want to explore a graph G, uh, starting from a node V, you need to have, first of all, a flag for every node. Initially, uh, this flag is set to false, and this flag represents um, whether you have visited that node before or not. So initially, we visit, of course, the starting node V. And then, for every neighbor of V, for neighbor U, for instance, uh, if we have not visited that node before, then we call this function recursively to visit that node. The functions that you see here, pre-visit and post-visit, they are not necessary, I just include them so that we get some additional information about the order in which this algorithm um, visits nodes. And as you see, they are basically just uh, time stamping with this variable clock. We create a timestamp for when node V essentially is pushed into the stack. And with the post visit function, we create another timestamp for the time that we pop the node out of the stack. So ignoring these timestamps for now, if you would uh, start with uh, this graph here, and let's say that we start our exploration from node A, let's look at the first couple of steps of the algorithm. So A would be marked as visited, then we look at the neighbors of A. It has three neighbors, B, C, and D. Suppose that we break the tie alphabetically, so we first go to B. It's a node that we have not visited before. So we call the explore function again on node B. Note that that is the time that uh, the pre-visit timestamp is set for node B when we first call the explore function for node B. Then look at the neighbors of B, uh, E and F. We first pick E, right? We call the explore function on E. We call the explore function on i, we call the explore function on j. Now at that point, we pop j out of the stack. This function explore returns from the call that we did for node j. And it is only that time that we create the post-visit timestamp for node j. Similarly then, we pop i out of the stack. We do the post timestamp for node i, for node d. When we reach node B again, which is still in the stack, we observe that it has one more neighbor, neighbor F, and so we call the explore function on F, then the explore function on C, and so on and so forth. This way, we will create a tree. We call it the DFS tree. Notice that the tree only includes the solid edges. The dashed uh, edges are part of the original graph, but they are not part of the DFS tree. And one more thing to notice here is that there are nodes that we cannot reach, of course, because they are not in the same connected component with node A. Suppose that we start from this node A on this graph this time. Let's look at the values of pre and post timestamps that each node gets. So. The first number that you see is the pre timestamp. The second number is the post timestamp. So we start with A. That's the time that A gets into the stack. That's why it gets the pre timestamp of 1. Then we explore B. It gets the pre timestamp of uh, 2. But then there are no uh, neighbors of B to explore further. So uh, B is popped out of the stack and it gets the post timestamp of 3. We return back to A, but we still have another node to explore, another neighbor to explore, E. So it gets the next timestamp 4, 
um, and so on and so forth. Uh, you see here that for every node we have the, the pre and the post timestamp. Now, clearly, uh, this will only explore this connected component of the graph. What do you do if you want to explore the whole graph and identify all the connected components? It's very simple. We can just use this function where initially, of course, uh, we flag all the nodes as not visited. And then for every node in the graph, if we have not visited that node, we call the explore function that I showed you in the previous page. So after you call the explore function with node A, you would have to call the explore function here again for some other node that has not been visited. In this example, we call the function uh, explore on node C. That's why it gets the timestamp 11, which is one more the post timestamp of 10. And so we explore all of these nodes, this connected component. And finally, the last node that we have to call explore on is the node F. The depth first search algorithm is exactly the same in directed graphs. We just need to pay more attention in the direction of the edges. So uh, here I give you a directed graph and uh, the explore function starts from node A. I will not go through the example in detail, but we have flagged here the pre timestamp and the post timestamp for every node, as you can uh, easily check. There is something interesting here that I want you to note. And this is that for any nodes, let's say U and V, these intervals between the pre timestamp and the post timestamp of uh, a node. So the intervals pre post for U and pre post for V, they are either completely disjoint or one of the two is contained in the other. For example, the interval uh, for B to 11 is completely disjoint from the interval from C, which is 1215. On the other hand, the interval for B to 11 is completely contained included in the interval of A, 116. So you cannot have, for example, uh, an interval for one node, for node U, 110, and for another node, you cannot have something like this. Now, why is this true? Essentially, these timestamps represent the time, the time period that the node was in the stack. Node A was in the stack from time 1 to time 16. And because the stack works in a last in, first out uh, mode, we cannot have that a node is in the stack for a time period that partially overlaps with the time period that a predecessor of that node was in the stack. Now that we are more familiar with the pre and post numbers of the DFS process, let's actually use them to classify the edges of a directed network. So if you have a directed network, you can classify the edges in four types. There are the edges that are part of the DFS tree, like these three edges here. There are uh, edges that are not in the DFS tree and they point from a node to a descendant of that node in the DFS tree that is not a child of that node. So the edge from A to D is a forward edge because it points from A to a descendant of that node in the DFS tree that is not a child of A. You can have back edges that point from a node to an ancestor of that node in the DFS tree. And you can also have cross edges like this, where essentially they are none of the above. They are not forward, they are not tree edges, they are not back edges. And as you can easily see, those edges always point to a node that we have previously fully explored before in the DFS process. So we can classify the 
edges of a directed graph using the pre and post numbers as follows. Suppose that you have an edge from a node U to a node V and you have the pre and post numbers for both U and for V. If the pre post interval of V is completely contained in the pre post interval of U, then the edge from U to V is either a forward edge or a DFS tree edge. If on the other hand the pre post interval of U is completely contained in the pre post interval of V, then the edge is a back edge. And finally, if the two intervals are completely disjoint, then that is a cross edge. We have visited and explored V earlier than U, and so this edge from U to V is a cross edge.